What's going on everyone? Lamar Bird Jr. here, bringing you guys some info. Info on sponsorship, pretty much the ins and outs of it. Wanted to make this video for you guys and kind of just go over some things. Uh, I really think there's a lot of misinformation out there, so I figured that I should kind of clean, clean some things up and just explain some things to you guys, just so you understand like what exactly sponsorship is. Um, or like a brand ambassador versus a demo rep. But uh, I'm going to touch on a few different things throughout this. I'll uh, try to make it short, but I will kind of cover uh, from all angles so you guys really kind of get the gist of it. And uh, you can actually make some decisions for yourself. This isn't like a video to say, you know, get your followers up and get sponsored, blah, 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 or market this way, or coupon code this. I'm making this to inform you so whenever companies do approach you with different kind of uh, contracts or different things, you know, you understand what you're getting yourself into and you're not like shooting yourself in the foot. Like a lot of people I know, or I've seen it happen where, you know, uh, they just didn't, wasn't aware of like the full situation. So what I have here is a four tier kind of pay system. Uh, this is kind of something that I made up in my head. Uh, it's going to vary based on a big scale from small companies that are just starting to big companies like BSN, Dimatize, you know, Muscle Farm, all that stuff. So uh, it's going to vary between all those, but it's kind of going to let you know where you sit in the industry as far as maybe how much you're getting paid or what you can expect to get paid. Uh, what's like realistic, like, you know, you might want $2,500 a month, but is that realistic considering the person you are and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to break it down for you guys. So tier one, if you're like a tier one contract athlete, I would say you're going to get anywhere from pretty much zero to $1,500 a month, which is just like, you know, like a monthly check, but you will get some sort of supplements. Um, and that's going to be determined by MSRP. Now, just be aware for the MSRP, I'll just make it real short. Uh, that's going to be, that's like 20% more on their, on their website. It's it's the highest list of price you're going to find for that product online. Because typically companies do that so they don't discourage you from buying Dimatize from, you know, the sub down the, the, the store down the street versus where you can go online and say, oh, I can get it from them myself. So they always make their brand stuff more expensive, like in-house, and, you know, they let everyone else kind of decide. So, but just be aware when they say, hey, we're going to give you like $500 MSRP, uh, that's really not that much because if you think about it, some of those proteins and different pre-workouts, those MSRPs are like 60 to almost like fucking $100. So if you're only getting 500, 400 MSRP, I mean, you're only getting three or four products a month, which isn't much. I mean, you probably go through pre-workout, you probably go through your protein. So you can, you can, you can barely afford to double up on one thing. So for me, I'll just say, uh, I'll speak for myself. If a company can't give me like free products, uh, like unlimited amount, um, obviously me not being like fucking taking advantage of things, but you know, uh, a, a legit, uh, request. If you can't give it to me every month, it's just not worth my time. Um, and that's the way I feel for a, for a lot of people because when you consider how much they actually make it for, uh, in-house fucking, literally fucking 10, sometimes less, depending on powder, capsules, all that stuff, what they make it for, and the MSRP depend on a protein versus fat burner versus test boost or blah, 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 I mean, I really think that as an athlete, if you're going to present that brand, you should be able to get whatever you want every month as long as you're not being a dick about it. Anyways, so that's my little spiff on MSRP. Be very careful about that. Uh, tier 2 right here is going to be, I say you're getting anywhere from 1500 to about four grand a month. So that's pretty big. Um, I really think in this section here, that's when you get my attention. So... And you're pretty much, usually these people, they're going to really get free subs. Uh, they're going to kind of get whatever, this payment amount, and then unlimited subs. Because these people tend to be like the higher ranked athletes. You know, they're going to be doing some of the marketing, on, you know, uh, some of the big stuff they're doing. You know, whatever, bodybuilding.com, kind of different stuff to store visits. Those are kind of athletes you can expect for that. Um, they're going to be like in the tier two. This is where things kind of start getting, uh, things are getting serious, uh, if you want to say it like that. But also keep in mind company size, how old they are. A lot of these companies are new, so some of them paying someone like two grand a month—that's like their cap. 
but you know, versus some other companies, it's, it's, the scale is going to kind of go up here. Um, tier three is like the fucking that's the golden ticket. Um, that's arguably obviously the highest you can go, and I would say in this one, you probably get anywhere from four to eight grand a month. Uh, again, this is like the this is pretty much you're the you're the the face guy of this company. Uh, lots of ads, lots of different stuff, traveling appearances, all that kind of stuff. Um, it may be some demo work. It kind of just depends. Uh, usually, kind of, I, f I find that the lower you go, the lower tier you go, you're going to have more demo work versus the higher tier you go. Uh, that really doesn't, you, more, it's more so like appearances and kind of, you know, more signing stuff, I'm not trying to sell products like, uh, you know, Branch Warren isn't doing, isn't doing demos. Uh, you know what I mean? There's certain athletes like that that, you know, uh, some of these guys, you know, Kai Green, when he was sponsored, you know, he wasn't doing demos, he was doing appearances. So, be careful with the appearances because that can really, that can really fuck you. Um, sometimes they say something like, oh, well, you know, we want you to do like 20 appearances a year. You gotta realize that that's on the, that's like you traveling like every other month. So, depending on your, like, what kind of you do for your day job, if you have a job, or, you know, if you're trying to do this full time. You know, uh, if you do have like you know, like a nine to five and stuff like that, or you know, family like that, you know, those appearances can definitely add up and kind of really start traveling. Uh, isn't necessarily easy when it comes to all that kind of stuff. Yes, sponsorship is fucking awesome to travel, but you know what I mean. Airports, traveling, doing this, doing that. You know, living out of your fucking suitcase for you know, it, it could be a little stressful. And uh, traveling's not cheap, so make sure you're getting the right shit, so it's not costing you. Um. Now, tier four is like 10 plus K a month. And usually like this is a line like where people kind of start, you know, really either getting like, you know, 10, uh, whatever it may be. But I'll say a couple more notches down is where you start seeing people start making their own companies. You know, they're like, oh, fuck, well, if so-and-so is giving me 15 grand a month, and I'm leveraging 200,000 followers to their stuff, why don't I just do that? You know, hey, I could private label product, blah, blah, blah. That's where you start seeing um, some of the bigger, bigger, bigger deals when you're like number one, number two bodybuilder is kind of like they usually do like a, uh, like, oh, Muscle Tech will do like a, like a two-year, $1 million deal or 1.2, you know, two-year deal. So those guys are pretty much, those guys are caking uh, for those top spots. Um, that's what I would say, like, like, like a pro, a pro, um, a top pro gets, like, that's cream of the cream there before you start really considering, like, hey, I'm making all this money, maybe I should actually make my own. So, something to think about through all these things is you want to make sure that you're, like, your travel and whatever they have you doing, whether it's demos, appearances, and stuff like that, you're covered. Uh, they're willing to reimburse you up to a certain amount. Um, especially, and that, that goes for demos, but also competing if you're a competitor. Make sure that, you know, they can uh, help you uh, with any kind of expenses, whether it's hotel, blah, blah, blah. Uh, me personally, whenever I was sponsored, my cap was like 750 So if, if I booked all my shit early enough, the 750 would cover like hotel and plane ticket. But, you know, if I had to stay any couple days longer, um, if I had to fly an extra distance out west to make plane tickets a little bit more expensive, or if I had to take taxis or you know, luggage fees, all that stuff, that 750 wouldn't cover me. So, from a competitor standpoint, when you're looking at competing things, that number, you want that to be like a thousand or just pretty much. I would say, if I was, you know, I'll give you my opinion, uh, if I was assigned with someone, I would say, hey, it's got to be a thousand or just cover all my competing expenses when I do compete. That would be the only one. But for demos and stuff like that, uh, when you're traveling, going to different cities, you know, um, Maybe that number should be around three to five hundred or something. You know what I mean? Because again, you know, if gas, hotel, food while you're there, gym pass, all stuff adds up. So my biggest thing is you don't want to go somewhere and end up paying for shit out of pocket. Um, you know, and and you can't get reimbursed for because at that point, you know, you're you're losing the, the the point of you know actually making money whenever you go places like that. Um, it's definitely fucking happened to me. It sucks whenever I go somewhere. And, you know, I had a, 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 a cap on something. I was already over my cap. I was fucking broke. So then, 
you know, spending my own money kind of, it, it becomes like a stressful situation to go to work if that makes any sense. I don't want that to happen to you guys. So, just make sure you're covered from all square ends depending on what the company wants you to do. Um, now, something else to think about is, uh, I'll say this, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not fucking sign like the week less than a month before a national show and if you're getting like a tier two type offer, all right? Um, even on the top end of, of tier one because you got yourself as like a free agent. Um, if someone's interested in you and are willing to offer you something that's going to kind of make you like, like okay, that's a, that's a sufficient enough for me and, and what I need to kind of get to the next level, someone else is probably willing to pay you that much too. So if you're going to sign something before a national show or a big show where like you're picked or favored to win, um, you could be tying yourself down. You know what I'm saying? Don't go home with the first fine girl you see in the club. If you wait till fucking 2 a.m., you're going to get yourself the best as opposed to, uh, you know, fucking 1030. You're just walking out with the first thing you got there for fucking free drinks. You know what I'm saying? So take that how you want. So always just be able to negotiate. Uh, with them, and also I'll say, if someone does throw you a legitimate offer, um, it's before Nats, and you know it's something you really want to do, a company you like, hey, blah, 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 then put a clause in your contract that says that once you turn pro, you're going to get X amount of money, so you're covering your ass. You know, hey, you know, it, it doubles, it goes from 1000 to 2000 or hey, I, I start getting an extra 1500 or something, and also you can actually put it, if you win a national show, that you can... I uh, get a bonus. Hey, if I win, if I win overall at Nats, I want fucking two grand. You know, whatever it may be, a thousand. You know, some people say little things. I've heard all kinds of numbers for that. So that's also something where, you know, hey, reward yourself. And that's what a lot of pros do as well. That's more in the pro circuit because as things start uh, being, when more money is, you know, hey, when I start winning X amount of pro shows, I get this much per show. So, and it, basically, this is kind of how everything works in a nutshell. Um, this is for athletes. Now, if you're a demo rep, if you're talking to a company and they're not talking to you around these, these terms, you are a demo rep. If you're talking to like, you know, so-and-so's assistant who's like head of the demo team so you're not fucking annoying the VP of sales, you're on a demo team. Um, the difference is, is basically, I'll, I'll kind of use some names here for an example. Uh, you know, when Kai Green was sponsored by Muscleheads, he didn't have to use coupon codes. He didn't have to set demos up and call stores to get things done. Um, not saying that maybe as an athlete you might have to do that for a company for certain things, but uh, ultimately it comes down to kind of what's your relationship with the company? Are, are you talking with us like, again, like the you know the hey the the guy who's head of the demo squad, or is you know the VP of sales calling you the week of the show? making sure you got product, making sure you're taken care of, you know, you're, you're getting a monthly check from them, not just, um, hey, you know, here's your coupon code, you know, represent the brand well, and there'll be opportunity to work up, you, you know what I mean? Um, so those are really the differences, and a lot of people see the demo things, and they think that uh, they're sponsored and they're not. So just be, just be aware and kind of, you know, companies are using that because social media is so popular that you can actually, you know, leverage sales and not add sales staff and blah, blah, blah. So be aware that there's only a very, very few that are sponsored that are looking at things like this versus someone that's calling GNC hoping to set up a BPI demo. That's not a sponsor. Um, I've seen different mixes and hybrids of, like, combinations of those. Um, and I guess maybe amongst them they can say they're an athlete or maybe the company uses that word. But speaking like in straight, you know, black and white, uh, this is going to be an athlete where, you know, a, another person gets. All right, guys. So I think I've pretty much covered all different aspects of uh, a sponsorship. Um, just kind of what's legit, what's not. Um, obviously, there are opportunities once you make it. So I started my first two gigs I did for Muscle Egg were completely free. You know, went completely against the norm, and they have given me a contract two months later. So, just be smart, guys. But uh, any questions or anything? Fucking, we're Facebook friends. You're not sure how to handle things. Someone approaches you. 
you know, with something, fucking shoot me a message or, you know, email. I'll be glad to help you guys and, you know, uh, advise you on, on kind of stuff like that. I'm not fucking Drew Rosenhaus, but I'm just going to break it down to you real and let you know what I experienced. So, hope you guys liked the video. Hope you found it informative. Until then, man, just keep chasing the pump, baby. That's all we can do. All right, guys.